Change begins from within. As easy as it is to look outside of ourselves and want the world to change, the truth is, it never will if we remain the same. This podcast was created for change makers like you who want more love and connection in your community. Today, you are going to hear stories that will inspire you and also challenge you to be the change. We are going to go deep, my friend. So take a deep breath and settle in. My name is Amy Leah Tamburini. Welcome to the Circle of Change. Hi, Changemaker. So great to be here with you on our 51st episode. I so enjoyed our conversation last week with Suzanne. And just to let you know, her dear friend, Bill, passed away a few days ago, uh, but she got to spend a lot of amazing time with him. I so want to celebrate her way of being, her courage. It's not everybody that can show up and be around somebody who is dying and really hold that space in graceful ways. And I know Suzanne was a true gift to her dear friend, Bill, during this time. And I love thinking about that because Bill obviously was a gift for her she got to pay that forward back to him in these moments, in these final moments of life. So I'm really glad you're here today because today is an episode that is from my heart. I think all of these episodes are from my heart, but this one I am maybe going to speak more raw than I normally do. And I'm going to be that way because I'm fired up. I got to participate in an amazing mastermind session this past weekend that really helped me tap into my fire. My fire. I know you know me as this calm uh, individual that brings peaceful energy to your day. And I love that. I love that I can be that for you, if indeed that is true. And Every once in a while, it feels really good to let something deeper come out of me. And that's what that this show is here today. So before we go there, let's read a poem. Let's settle in to this present moment. I love the present moment. It truly is the most freeing place that we could be. So find your seat if you're seated or find your feet on the ground and feel the earth underneath you supporting you every moment, every breath, every step that you take. Let that feeling come over you and let your body relax, let your nervous system relax, knowing that you are safe, you are protected, you are supported by this beautiful energy. The poem I am going to read today is from the book Belonging, Remembering Ourselves Home by Tokopa Turner. Sedna's Signature. Great ocean mother, I call upon you to grace my shores. I make myself as still as sand, who knows the patience of millennia having been ground down to my essential parts. I wait my turn at the edge of known things, that you might soak me with your rising swell. I wish for nothing but to be dislodged by your power, perhaps even carried into your depths, for the chance at a glimpse of your underlife. May I be taken into your possession, even for a moment, to know the absence of my gravity and participation in your rhythms and contractions. May my body be, for what it was intended, an expression of your grace, and what small ways I make with this poetry, what songs and friendships I form, what migrations and ripples I disturb in the world. May they have something of your signature on them. May the you that has touched me go on multiplying in your phenomenal mathematics until we are all suffused with awe at your vastness within us. 
The mastermind I attended this weekend was with one of my favorite humans, Sean Smith. He is a masterful coach and an extraordinary human being who is really doing the work and helping others do the work, which is the essence of what it is we are all about here. He coaches people and gives people the skills to coach others to really clear away old patterns of being, old ways our brains are programmed to be to protect us at all costs so that we can show up with more love and more compassion, experience more joy, and really step into our purpose. If you are an entrepreneur, a coach, really, if you are a human being and you're committed to being the change, I highly recommend you check him out. It's Elite Success Systems. And he has TED Talks and many different programs. And although they are geared toward coaches, these are trainings for humanity. And that's why I love this man. He's leading the charge in so many ways. I was using the mastermind session, my 25 minute piece to get clear language for a pitch that I am presenting this week. The pitch is to gain access to funders and resources, mentors, and other types of support to bring this vision, this mission I have to the worldwide stage. It's super exciting. What I realized and what was pointed out to me in this coaching session was that I was working so hard to find the words that would appeal to other people. I was trying to find the words that other people spoke to describe what it is I'm up to in the world because I wanted them to get it. But the message I received at this coaching workshop was that that's not the way forward. (laughs) That's not the path. So Sean actually said at the very end, he's like, you know, this pitch isn't about the pitch, Amy Leah. This is about you finding what it is that lights you up. And then regardless of whether or not this goes anywhere with this particular group of people is beside the point. And that moment was a light bulb moment for me because I've been struggling, like efforting at this task really for my website copy, for my email communications and newsletters, what got really clear to me this weekend was that there are many of us up to similar endeavors in the world. There are a lot of us really passionate about the big issues and bringing change. Everybody speaks about it in their own way. People will be attracted to different people based on how it is they say it and how it is they see the world and the words that they use. And that's what this is all about. It brings me back to the whole concept of the ecosystem that we chatted about two episodes ago, where the beauty of an ecosystem and the strength in the ecosystem is the diversity in it, that each and every one of us has a special role to play here on earth in our lifetime. And when we fully can understand and appreciate what that role is, and maybe it's never 100% clear until until we die but that we we just keep taking steps toward 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 that that's really what we're meant to do that is our contribution to making this world a better place and it's only when we resist taking those steps that that's when we feel the tension that's when the divisiveness shows up that's when the disease shows up in our body So perhaps you can recognize that for yourself in your own life if you reflect back or look back and say, okay, when was I free flowing and feeling good and energized and and feeling like I was making a, a real contribution? It was probably when you were in your flow when you were when you were doing something that you were passionate about. And that could look like acting, that could look like making wooden boxes, that could look like cleaning a dance studio, that could look like being on the dance stage, that could look like being in an office setting, making policies, that could be leading teams, whatever it is for you, whatever that thing that lights you up, that's your thing. For me, anyways, I can get caught up in questioning in it. And is that really a purpose? And 
Does that really mean anything? And I'm here to say that, yes, it is. (laughs) The body is such an amazing thing. What I'm more clear on today than I have been at any other time in my life is that it's essential, essential for each and every one of us to have joy, to be moving in the direction of joy at the very least. Because when we're doing that, that's a signal, that's a sign that we are tapping into our purpose, what it is we're, we're here for. And it doesn't need to make sense. It just needs to feel good. So when I did this pitch practice on the weekend, the next day, what I realized was that I'm so passionate about creating spaces for people to be seen and heard. That's it. And I have thought long and hard about that over the years to be like, really, is that, is that really a thing? Like, can I make a business around that? Can I really create change around that? And what's amazing is that since I've been really clear on that, and since I'm moving toward that now in really big and bold ways, it is showing up everywhere. Every single conversation I have, people are sharing that there's not a space for them to feel safe to really speak for what's in their heart, or they don't feel heard in conversations or seen, and they feel ignored or not valued. I don't think everybody in the world is experiencing that observation, but I know those observations are here specifically for me to just keep saying, keep going, keep going. People need this work, keep going. So my question for you is, what are the messages that you are hearing around you? What are the conversations that keep coming up for you? What are the themes know that not everybody is experiencing those same themes, that those themes are here for you to pay attention to and get curious about and maybe walk toward just a little bit in whatever way that is for you. So here's the pitch. As it stands today, it's going to go through many renditions in the next 48 hours. (laughs) But I would love to know what you think. We don't have an epidemic of disease or mental illness, divisiveness or global warming. We have an epidemic of people not being seen and heard. To solve the problems of systemic racism to the opioid crisis, we need the wisdom of the collective, but we don't have safe structures in place to have those kinds of conversations. But that is changing. The Kindness Circle has transformed hundreds of lives by creating brave spaces for Humans to come together, be authentic, take ownership, and speak and be heard. This circle, it fosters compassion and deep curiosity and connection, setting communities up to make the changes they need from the ground up. There's no setting that is immune to this kind of behavior change. We've gone to communities, organizations, schools, and we are just getting started. I only have a minute for the pitch. So that that was the minute. (laughs) And uh, it's not all there yet. I'm so lit up about this mission. I'm so lit up about the clarity on it. I'm so lit up that this space here that we've created together is part of this movement. By you sitting here with me in this circle, we are creating that safety, that space to be heard, for you to listen to your heart, for you to explore how it is you're showing up in the world or how it is you see the world and being able to challenge that, vulnerably challenge that, but doing so in a way where there's no judgment, there's only compassion and love here in this space for you. And that's what I want for every single human on earth. I truly believe that when we create spaces for people to come together and to be themselves, to be able to explore who they truly are and what it is they are truly here for, and to get into the deep conversations and unpack the ways of being that we have all been brought up with in this very colonized world, to do that in a safe and beautiful setting, that's where the change happens. It happens in the small circles. It lights me up that you're here with me in this space and that we get to do this together 
every single week. Richard Wagamese has a quote. He says, this is how you change the world. The smallest circles first. That humble energy, the kind that says, I will do what I can do right now in my own small way, creates a ripple effect on the world. I believe that is true. I believe that with every single episode that you are here with me, that we are creating that ripple. I believe that with every kindness circle we host, we are creating that ripple. And so I'm committed to this mission and I hope that you will join me in it. I'd love to hear your feedback on the pitch as it stands right now (laughs) and continue to be here, to come to this space, to share this circle, to leave us reviews, to leave us ratings, to become a circle of change supporter. All of this matters. All of this helps and it contributes to the change that we're committed to making in the world. Next week, we are joined by an amazing change maker. Her name is Kate Sutherland. I met Kate during the Kindness Circle tour, and this was the Kindness Circle that we did up in Powell River in the Quathet region. She's awesome. I mean, I, I do community engagement, but she takes engagement to the next level. So if you are at all interested in how we have conversations that really create change and tools to be able to do that, please join us next week. There's so much wisdom and her gentle, loving energy is so nourishing. (laughs) Thanks so much for being here to listening to these words today. I hope there's some nugget in here for you to take into your own change making journey in life. I love you and I will see you next week. I'm now passing the talking piece to you. If you feel called to put your voice in the circle, please head to humconsulting.ca forward slash podcast and share your story there. I cannot wait to hear what has come up for you as you have listened to what has been shared here today. I wish you love and joy beyond your wildest imagination. Thank you so much for being here in the circle of change. I also want to express my gratitude to the following peeps. Circle of change is recorded on Lekwungen territories, and I am so grateful to live on this land. Our opening and closing music was created by the talented E. Roll Beats. You can find his creations at erollbeats.com. And special thanks to my coach, Mary Chan of Organized Sound Productions for bringing this podcast to life. Until next time, ciao.